My name's Nigel Verdon, I'm CEO and co-founder of Railsbank. And Railsbank goal is to enable any uh, company to be a fintech. So uh, fit, uh, startup companies on the journey uh, to growing and becoming a world leading companies or existing brands uh, like supermarkets and others to offer financial services. Uh, we've just, as Helen said earlier on, and we just launched in the US. So that makes us the only global banking as a service platform as we're now live in the US, uh, UK, Europe, and Southeast Asia. Our US, uh, we've also um, and not only launched the US, we've also launched a new product, and that is a credit as a service product. And on top of that, we credit card as a service uh, for, for the US market and hard. A wonderful guy called Dov Mamor, who uh, we worked together when, when I was in Currency Cloud, which is the last company I founded. He then went to Green Dot and ran banking as a service of Green Dot as a well-known uh, issue over there. And he now runs uh, the United States or North America for, for Rails Bank. So a shout out to Dov if he's listening. Uh, welcome to the team. And uh, he's already very well known in the United States. And hopefully he'll be uh, able to be on, a, uh, on one of these uh, open banking excellence uh, events as, as a talker sometime soon. One of the thing, real learning thing was trying to understand the customer uh, because it was very much marketed uh, and especially on the government side towards consumers where if I went to my grandmother and asked my grandmother or 90% of the market who aren't really technical uh, what uh, uh, open banking was, they wouldn't have a clue uh, at all. Uh, what, so I think... One of the learnings is to, for if you're implementing open banking in your industry, is uh, address the real customer of it, which is the fintech industry, the accounting industry, the lending industry, all the others who can build product. And then consumers, they will get amazing experiences on, on the back of that. So I think that's that's one, one area that, uh, that was missed. Uh, some other areas is, uh, I think the... Uh, key thing is standards. Uh, the internet was successful uh, in the 1990s because there was independent standards throughout the world. Uh, and I think blockchain, blockchain still struggles on this because there's multiple competing standards. If you look at email, as a, uh, in the 1990s, there was, a, there was a ton of competing email platforms from Microsoft and Apple had its own. There's open with SMTP and the web standards. When everybody settled on the standard, Email them have become ubiquitous amongst everybody, uh, everybody out there. I think the challenge now is because we've already got UK standards, we've got the the Berlin Group standards, we've got other standards appearing. As as an industry, we almost need to give ownership of what open banking protocols are, uh, so people can implement them uh, to to a standards body. I think that's a, that's a learning from it. But to, to to have standards, you've got to have somebody who went first. And so hats off to everybody in the UK who went first. It'll be driven by a combination of consumers and by regulators the ideal way. Because uh, the regulators get people to the inertia and uh, they do play a massive role in that. But they're not uh, standards bodies. I, I think it's uh, all the uh, the niche uh, open banking initiatives in the so UK, in Europe, in Australia, in Canada, uh, and the starting I know in Israel and uh, talking to the regulator down there and others. Uh, they they should all need to get the ISO involved, uh, so the, the the protocols are made uh, a standard. That is a quite a task. That's probably a five to ten year task to get those really out. Five years probably is the first publication. But that, that will really radically change the ability of openness and global banking. Because if you look at uh, anybody who's a global bank, and uh, I'm not picking HSBC, I'm just, just helping to know some of the numbers, that's about 50 banks with one logo uh, uh, on the top. Uh, and that's how it exists. If you had open banking standards across uh, those 50 banks, I can guarantee HSBC internally would operate a lot more efficiently. As well, because you've had protocols allow you to decouple uh, internal logic. Uh, so it's the whole thinking that people like Richard Stallman, who is uh, behind the Open Source Foundation and 
and all those uh, movements uh, out of MIT um, not many years ago. Uh, that whole open protocol, open standards and everything uh, does mean you can be a lot more efficient and a lot more powerful uh, and, and, and work in an open world. And you look at the places where, where people have their fiefdom and they're still trying to control it and everybody else is open. You suddenly, it's like Apple found it with the email. They had a great email app, but nobody liked it because everybody was an SMTP.